Hey there, it's Pete for Sample Library Review, and today I'm checking out the Synchron Woodwinds by Vienna Symphonic Library. To complete the Synchron Orchestral Series, Vienna Symphonic Library have finally released the highly anticipated Synchron Woodwinds. With a total of 13 instruments and 7 ensembles, the Synchron Woodwinds use the multifunctional Synchron player, fully loaded with stacks of articulations, various microphone mixes and woodwind effects. If it's exquisite sounding, detailed woodwinds on your thing, the VSL Synchron Woodwinds are one attractive package. The VSL Synchron Woodwinds come in two versions. There's a standard version, which is 84.4 gigabytes, and there's a full version, which is 137.9 gigabytes. The only difference between the two are the different mic positions, so there are more in the full version, but all the articulations are the same. The library was recorded at the world-renowned Synchron Stage in Vienna, and each instrument comes with a whole range of articulations. There are nine solo instruments currently, but more to be added, seven ensembles, one tutti patch, and two effects instruments. The Synchron Woodwinds run in the free VSL Synchron player, and currently the standard library sells for €595, Euros, and the full library sells for €850. Euros. If you own any of the Bing Bang Orchestra, Woodwinds, there are dynamic discounts available. So out of the box, they sound great and they fit perfectly into an orchestral setting. At the moment, there are four solo instruments missing. And if you buy the library now, you'll get those at the early part of 2022. So at the moment, there are, uh, I believe, let's just count up. We've got the piccolo flute, flute one, alto flute, Oboe 1, English Horn, uh, Clarinet, B flat 1, Bass Clarinet, and Bassoon and Contrabassoon. So that is 9, it will become 13 uh, solo instruments. So very, very cool. Now I've loaded up the flute and we're in the Synchron player. Now as you can see, I do use quite a lot of VSL libraries now. And once you wrap your head around the Synchron player, there's so much functionality and the workflow is really, really straightforward. So here's a flute. Okay, now my DAW is set to zero dB. So I'm just gonna bring up the master volume a little bit. So the flutes sound awesome. If I go to the legato, you've got all this different uh, legato style. And of course you have different vibrato. So if I go on to the regular, I could go for just move to fast. And then you can just have auto speed so you don't have to worry about um, going through these. And That is triggered by velocity. And then uh, Espresso Uville. Got those gorgeous uh, volume swells. I'm purposely leaving out the vibrato at the moment as well, so I'll talk about that in a second. Cover kind of Marcato start.
You got that really um, sort of airy sound of the synchron stage. Now, I've purposely um, not gone through these vibratos. So you've got Senza vibrato. And it's very subtle. But if you want to have a more expressive vibrato, go for the con vibrato. So it's more expressive. Now, if you want to crossfade between them, you can set up CC20, which is already there. So if I just control CC20, you'll see it crossfades. Now that's one of the features it took me ages to get my head around uh, because it's so clever, especially with the strings. There's so many different varieties of vibrato and you can sort of crossfade um, as you want to between all of these. So I go from no vibrato and then crossfade into that gorgeous progressive vibrato. Now, um, that's the, the legato notes. The shorts, absolutely great. I love using string, not string shorts, woodwind shorts. Um, and you can see how quickly all this is loading as well, like lightning fast. And there's two different types, so um, you can have bold or agile. So if you're doing sort of runs, or sort of little flutters or trills, works really, really well. Um, so that's really, really quick. And then you've got long staccato, I'll go back to bold. Something just made a nice crack in my studio there. Uh, potato. Oops, a doozy. And then you have potato long as well. Then we have the dynamic patches. So, um, you can add vibrato. Sounds gorgeous. And then let's go for the uh, sports artissimo. And that range is absolutely awesome, down to that low B. Um, crescendo. Of course, all of this is completely uh, key switchable.
and then diminuendo. And fluttering trills, so let's do some flutter tongue. Sounds, uh, yeah, really a uh, sort of airy and delicate. Uh, flutter tongue marcato. And then half tone trill. And you have normal and legato versions. And then some whole tone trill. Staying on legato there. I can see that I'm using the mod wheel a lot to go for this uh, velocity crossfade. And a quick brief note about that you'll see that I'm on the velocity crossfade sustain um, patches, and that's all operated on the mod wheel. There are just velocity crossfade uh, patches as well, and then just velocity. Now, if you're working on shorts, for example, um, using just the velocity patches is really, really useful. I did actually use the um, modulation and sort of just drew in the curves when I was changing the velocity and found that really, really useful. So I'm happy just using all of these, but it's great to have the options. So um, fast repetitions. Now these are, they, whoops, they give you the tempo. You can have that ring out. A sort of sample release. It's a little bit quiet again. Um, and then same at 130. Then 140. And 160. So really useful uh, to have those. And then custom, you can create your own sort of key switches and uh, banks, so really, really useful. Now, I'm not going to spend ages um, going through the Synchron Player. There's loads of tutorials on there, um, but it does exactly what it says, really. Um, you could adjust the expression. Whoops, I should actually be on an articulation. So I can use that as a volume slider. And Velocity Crossfade actually goes through the different velocity layers. So by default, it does involve a little bit of wiggling around, um, but I use a foot pedal for CC11 and then CC1 on my mod wheel. So you can get some really um, sort of precise and very expressive performances. So that's the solo flute now if i sort of whiz through um we have the piccolo flute so really high up now i'm gonna uh just crank up the volume and we've run out of range so um, let's go for Expressivo, Sons of Vibrato. And it is pretty quiet still. So if I go into the mix, um, I could just crank up the stereo mix.
and you can add your other microphones as well if you want to um into the mix but i'm might have had one more Uh, let's go, I should take the main out, let's go, uh, it's a bit more of an ambient. So yeah, um, depending on which version you have, uh, the I'm going to use the standard mix versions, uh, but you get some, yeah, uh, sort of really cool mix options if you want. Um, and let's go back. So that's a piccolo flute. Um, the shorts are absolutely stunning. Let's go very quickly. Sounds great. Now the alto flute, let's quickly learn, load that, and then go back to perform. Um, let's do a little bit of chord. And again, all the same articulations. Let's go bring those up. some legato again uh, just regular with vibrato sounds brilliant and then uh, we go into one of the ensembles, so flute ensembles. Now these are three uh, groups of three. So uh, again, it's almost like you can actually hear the space between the flutes. So that sounds cool. Um, let's go legato. So there we go. Oops, a daisy. Sounds cool. Obo one. Let's just go straight for the legato. Let's do regular. All the really cool like mechanical sounds i mean they're there they're subtle but it just really adds to the realism sounds great let's go for some flutter uh just trills Which obviously makes sense, it being a novo. Uh, but there we go. So, um, yeah, uh, half tone. Uh, 
absolutely love no matter when you like how you start the notes or add the notes it just syncs all together and um let's just do a crescendo and yep So set the length of the crescendo here and the different vibrato using. So yeah, solo oboe um, sounds absolutely brilliant. Now I'd obviously use this um, with the crossfade vibrato. It is a feature I absolutely love. Let's go to the English horn. So I'll play uh, the polyphonic. Let's go legato. Uh, let's go fast this time. Oh, that was um but yeah oh it just sounds great uh stick out the shorts now as you sort of get lower in pitch you don't really have to turn these up as much um yeah sounds cool let's just Go for another trill. Very ominous. And um, we'll look at the oboe uh, ensemble. So once again, you can really hear um, the space in between the players. And that incredible room sound. Now, if you want to go to the uh, mixer presets, um, there's some very cool instrument specific ones. So if I do, I'm a real sucker, especially on the synchron strings. Um, I love the Lush remix. Just sounds awesome. And if I go for lush long and um, yeah, let's just do some. Bring the mass volume down now. just get that really um great cinematic sound like if i was working on this like in a sort of more symphonic size that would really cut through uh so that works really really well now let's go back to the uh patches so uh clarinet b flat So the range is great. Uh, 
that's going to go to auto. There's a little spike there actually, because I just, uh, for the first time, went to fast. I was clearly not hitting my uh, controller too hard today. a lot of whizzing around I should play a little bit slower a bit more lyrically um, so yeah uh, clarinet in B flat Just sounds gorgeous. Um, bass clarinet. Let's go straight for some legato. Let's go right down. And the clarinet ensemble. Uh, let's do some more chordal stuff. Let's do a little bit of legato. And then we have the bassoon. So again, solo. And the contrabassoon. Oops, don't want to start that high. Let's go right down the octave and bring it up. That's one weighty sound. And then we have the bassoon ensemble. There are woodwinds tutti, um, which I instinctively actually uh, separate into high and low, but it is all one patch. So if I use the uh, expression, 
just to illustrate. So uh, that's with the piccolo, and you can take the piccolo out as well. I'll go back to the velocity. So it's piccolo gone. With the piccolo. Uh, long and copy. I love how the timbre change as you sort of go between octaves. Um, the shorts are absolutely incredible. Not when I'm playing them like that, obviously, but... <laughs> Um, but yeah, so having the 2T uh, is really useful, and especially if you just want to sort of throw down some chords, um, put those into the mix, they do sound great. And they have the woodwind effects, and I love the VSL effects. So these are split into high and low. Um, So that's long notes and then octave key runs. Now this is where it is very cool. So you've got these runs thrown in already. And they can have a perform octave set. Okay. That's something I would uh, probably look into a bit more. The key switches down there. Oh, let's change the key. That might be if you want to just put the MIDI in. Uh, not 100% there. But you can see the octave. So that would be the performance notes. So, um, yeah, and then you have uh, octave runs in different scales. So, being a guitarist, I'll go straight for the Lydian. And go chromatic. Fantastic. Whole tone. And all different modes. Um, Dorian, Alien, or natural. Do some pretty cool uh, harmonies. Just yeah, that, that's that's a massive time saver. I cut them. And then some arpeggios. Uh, again, these are tempo synced. So minor major seven, let's just go standard major. Uh, some minor. Oops. Sound cool. So if we go uh, just down. 
Oh, cross. So some cool movement. That works really well. And then again, these are tempo synced. And of course, there are effects for the low woodwinds. And these are a little bit different. So you have um, our regular. And flutter tongue. And then you have clusters. Uh, use clusters a lot. So there's some staccato clusters, some long notes. Let's go uh, espressivo. That sounds cool. Um, you can flutter it on the clusters. And then you can have uh, regular to cluster crossfade. So this is on CC3. So I'm just going to quickly pop to CC3. Which I don't actually seem to have set up. Uh, but what that would do is go from regular to cluster. If I can, I can actually just learn that on a different. Let's do on CC20. There we go. Um, so, yeah. Oop. So, regular sound. Excuse my window there. It's incredibly comprehensive. So, yeah, very, very impressed. Now, when you, let's say, let's just open the also flute and all the instruments are virtually the same in terms of everything you get with them. So when you open up and see, you have all of these different articulations. There's so much to work with um, for, you know, all your woodwind needs as it were. But the, the sort of nitty gritty, the short sound, fantastic. <laughs> And then the longs sound incredible, and as do the legatos. So really, your bread and butter articulations sound great. And then everything else on top of it also just works really, really well. As a whole ensemble, it's really, really impressive. It covers absolutely everything. Um, so for me, using the Synchron uh, Orchestra, it fits perfectly. But the demo that I used before I actually didn't use anything else from VSL. Um, just the woodwinds and you can see that it just really really fit beautifully with uh, whatever room or situation you want to put it in. I have made a short very uh, Danny Elfman inspired demo and this is how I would use woodwinds so I've used a lot of longs and I've actually taken out any uh, string longs apart from solo instruments and there's lots of shorts plenty of runs lots going on and yeah, sort of using the entire range of the um, woodwinds. So without further ado, here is that demo and let's see how they sound out the box.
Now, my final thoughts on the VSL Synchron woodwinds. Um, they've got the Vienna sound, the Synchron sound. So if you do use the other instruments or the Big Bang, it all fits together. But it doesn't mean they have to. So as I've previously said, it will work in any situation you want. You can have really, really close mics and um, sort of virtually no room sound and then you can sort of colour the sound as you want if you want to do that but I absolutely love the sound it sits in. The range of instruments is absolutely brilliant and the Synchron player if you're used to using it is fantastic and if you're not used to using it it's a really good time to start because there's so many amazing instruments now for the Synchron player. The articulations is everything you're going to need really for woodwind playing and it all sounds so realistic. In fact VSL on the whole sound realistic um, they're not going for that sort of like glossy film tone which you can obviously get through mixing um, like you know sort of different mic placements or the mixer presets uh, there's so much going on there um, so you can have that but sort of the classic room mix is just a really realistic instrument captured on a fantastic scoring stage so yeah um Range of instruments, articulations, brilliant. Just the whole package, it is absolutely fantastic. All that leaves me to say is thank you so much for checking out this review of the VSL Synchron Woodwinds. If you like what you heard, feel free to leave us a like on the video and put a comment. Uh, what do you like about the instruments? What do you enjoy hearing? What are the sort of really cool features? and how would you use this instrument in your productions. If you've not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos and then pop over to samplybreview.com to check out everything that is going on in the world of virtual instruments. Until next time, have a great day and speak soon.